The Unteachables by Gordon Corman. Chapter 19, Parker Elias. Grams has a lot of life experience being super old and all that. For example, she tells me that when she was first dating my grandfather back in Israel, there was this other girl who was trying to steal him away while Grams was doing her military service in Haifa. So Grams challenged this girl to an arm wrestling match, and the prize was Grandpa. I peer over at her in the passenger seat of the pickup. What if you lost? I was loading supply trucks, kiddo. I was strong as an ox. As much as I love Grams, I'm not so sure I believe the story. The last time she explained how she got rid of the girl who moved in on Grandpa, she said she backed, her, she backed over her Vespa with a Jeep. Graham tells the same stories because she doesn't remember telling them last time and the time before that. Some people might find that annoying. To me, it just means that we've always got something new and interesting to talk about while I'm driving her around. I just wish she could remember my name. The reason the subject comes up, dating and boyfriends, I mean, is that there's a rumor that Miss Fountain and Jake Terranova are going out. Our class thinks this because Jake has kind of adopted SCS8. Jake, that's what he told us to call him even though the employees at the dealership call him Mr. Terranova, but to us, he's Jake, except Ribbit. He always uses Mr. when he talks to Jake, which is almost never. Jake may be hitting it off with Miss Fountain, but he isn't getting very far with Mr. Kermit. Here's how it usually goes down. Jake shows up in room 117 to invite us to Terranova Motors so the mechanics can show us how windshield wipers work or how a battery supplies power to the starter. He has to come in person because Mr. Kermit's phone is so old that it would probably explode if it ever received a text. Meanwhile, Miss Fountain randomly walks in from 115. Oh, what a surprise! Mr. Terranova's here! She calls him Mr. Terranova too. We're not fooled. He calls her Emma. From there, something always happens to connect our two classes. Maybe Vladimir starts squeaking because he hears Aldo's voice and won't shut up until Aldo goes over there, or the seventh graders are just about to have circle time and we get in on that. Jake loves circle time and whenever it's his turn to compliment someone, he always picks Miss Fountain. Mateo is confused. I thought Jake chose us because he wants to make up for the cheating scandal, not because of Miss Fountain. That's just an excuse, Barnstorm puts in wisely. Do you think it's the car, I muse? Jake rolls this really snazzy Porsche convertible that's got to be a lot of fun to drive. Of course it's not the car, Kiana reports angrily. Miss Fountain isn't that kind of person. She wants a relationship. I don't understand how Kiana can know something like that, but whatever the reason, life is definitely better since Jake started hanging around. Everybody loves him, even Aldo. Aldo hates everybody. Jake's more like another kid than an adult, but a kid who has a dream life with tons of money and no adults telling him what to do. He talks to me about cars, to brainstorm about sports, and to Mateo about Game of Thrones. He talks to Elaine. I guess car dealers don't worry about being headbutted downstairs or tossed into garbage dumpsters. He talks to Kiana about practically everything. He asks Rahim opinion, Rahim's opinion on the art for new ads for Terranova Motors, and Rahim never so much as yawns when he's around. The only person Jake can't schmooze is Mr. Kermit. Our teacher isn't quite mean to him, most of the time, he just ignores Jake the way he used to ignore us. When Mr. Kermit's old car breaks down, he has it towed all the way across town, even though Jake offers to fix it for free. Ribbit would rather pay a lot of money than accept a favor from his old enemy. Whatever the reason Jake has started hanging around, the trips to Terranova Motors are amazing. At first, the service staff aren't too thrilled to see Elaine because of what happened that time with the, with the cookie. But then, 
the compressor for the pneumatic system conks out, and Elaine's the only one who can loosen a strip bolt using a hand wrench. All the mechanics stop what they're doing and applaud. Kid, that was something, the service chief exclaims admiringly. If the lift system loses power, can we count on you to pick up cars on your shoulders? It's the first time I've ever seen Elaine blush. I'll bet the kid she had butted down the stairs wouldn't think it's so funny that an eighth grade girl is stronger than a shop full of adult mechanics. At first, the mechanics just talk a lot and show us stuff, but pretty soon we're doing real work. Jake guides my hand as I fit a new hose into the radiator of a Jeep Cherokee. As I set the ring to seal the connection, it just feels right. Somehow I know that hose isn't gonna leak. The boss reaches in and tests my handiwork. Perfect. Not so tight that the rubber might split. Nice job, Parker. It's weird. I open a book and the letters are all jumbled together into unbreakable code. But I look at a car engine and it all makes sense. Even if the tires still say, ready, goo. That's supposed to be good year. Mr. Kerman is watching me and he's almost smiling. I think I can count on a puffy tail being added to my line of the chart today. Terra Nova Motors isn't the only place we're doing real work. It's happening in room 117, too. Mr. Kermit is teaching stuff, math, science, English. We have our first test of the year, social studies, and Mr. Kermit even grades it. When we get to class the next day, our papers are face down on our desks. Aldo flips his over. D? Ribbit never gave tests before, and now he's throwing Ds around? Barnstorm laughs in his face. It isn't Ribbit's fault you're stupid. He examines his own paper. The word incomplete is written across the top. What? He complains. At least I got a grade, Aldo tells him. I miss the old Ribbit, Barnstorm complains. Yeah, Aldo agrees. This is way too much like education. I get an incomplete too, mostly because I finished only seven of the 20 questions, but I blink seven check marks parade down the page, which means whatever I did, I aced. I still got an incomplete, but not incomplete dumb, just incomplete slow. It stinks to fail, whatever the reason, but I disagree with Aldo and Barnstorm that our class was better before. We'll be in high school next year. Will they have an SCS 9 for us, followed by SCS 10, SCS 11, and SCS 12? And then what? Sooner or later, something has to change. It might have, might as well start now. As I take my seat, I catch a glimpse of the test paper on Elaine's desk. I shake my head. I must be reading it wrong. That's what I do. On the other hand, how do you scramble a single letter? If I didn't know better, I swear Elaine rhymes with pain, just pulled an A.